With a V12 engine and a targeted curb weight of less than 2,204 pounds, the Gordon Murray Automotive T50 is for the purest sports car seeker. At the heart of the naturally aspirated machine will be a completely bespoke engine developed by Cosworth as a Formula 1 engine for the road. The 3.9 liter does away with forced induction and revs all the way up to a screaming 12,000 RPM with the full amount of torque kicking in at only 2,500 RPM. It produces a healthy 344 foot-pounds of torque while producing 654 horsepower at 11,500 RPM. All that power will be channeled to the rear wheels through a short throw six-speed H-pattern manual gearbox developed in collaboration with x -Track. If you're wondering about the car's size, it will be only 2.36 inches longer and 1.18 inches wider than its source of inspiration, the iconic McLaren F1. The design was obviously taken after the McLaren F1, which is hardly a surprise considering the T50 has been noted as being the spiritual successor of the fastest naturally aspirated car ever made. Well, the wait is finally over, and what a wait it's been, Gordon. This has got to be the most eagerly anticipated supercar launch since the McLaren F1. Yeah, this one I'm 100% happy with. Um, the, the styling I've always enjoyed just as much as the engineering design. And for me, proportions and actual balance in the shape is what it's all about. You know, I've always loved cars that are clean and pure. And uh, the tools we've got available now to design these things with, uh, this one we've nailed. But the first thing I thought when I saw it was pure. No wings, no little widget, nothing. It's just, it's, it's beauty. It's, it's a pure, beautiful car. Yeah, I mean, really, I think, I think we've got this one absolutely spot on. And it's not just the style, it's the size of the thing. If you think about this, this has got three grown-ups in it, a V12, really good luggage space, and it's the footprint of a Porsche Boxster. And that's important to me as well. So you, when you're driving it, you can move round and you can, you can play in your own lane, you're not taking up the whole road. Yeah, I don't, I don't do big cars. I don't do heavy cars and I don't do big cars. Speaking about weight, 980 kilos all up. Um, what lens did you, are famous for your weight saving, what lens did you go to to get this car down to 980 kilos? Well, the only way you can, I mean, we, we did a little bit of a survey and the average supercar is over 1,400 kilos these days. And, you know, this was always going to be under 1,000 kilos, come hell or high water. Uh, the only way you get there is absolute focus, and not just on the overall design and engineering, but actually every single detail. That's the first element. The second element is you need to be in a company that doesn't have committees and layers of management because you're never going to get a light, focused car. So those two combined together really give you something like this. I mean, most things as they get older, cars, as you say, we've seen them getting bigger and like, you know, get a bit of a middle-aged spread as you go along, but you've almost just... You've just shaved it even closer now, haven't you? It's just, it's more focused than, than before. Well, don't forget though, I had 20 years in Formula One and for me, car design is packaging. And boy, 20 years in Formula One, <laughs> that's a good learning ground. So um, just shrink wrapping a, a beautiful shape around the basic elements in the car is something I, I really love doing. It took my breath away when I saw it. Yeah. Good. <laughs> let's, uh, let's have a look. Just watch yourself on the turntable. Uh, let's get the guys to move this around and let's have a look at the, the business end at the back. I love the, uh, the badge on the front. Yeah, that's 1,200 years old, that mermaid. <laughs> Goes back to the old Murray family. And is it the, is it the colours of the, the, the Murray tartan? Yep, yep. Those are the, the three colours in the tartan. Lovely. I definitely appreciate that. So this is the business end. It's dominated by one, one component, isn't it? And is, is this harking back to the, the old fan car, the old Formula One Brabham fan Well, I, su I suppose you could say in looks it is, but really um, the functionality is completely different. This is much more sophisticated. The fan car was a blunt instrument, it really was. It was, it, it was a vacuum cleaner, you know. It had skirts around the outside and a great big fan just sucking it to the ground and that was it. So. Um, this is much more sophisticated, so this is much more about boundary layer control where we've got massive diffusers, um, 
as you can see. Yeah, I can see a drive shaft. <laughs> yes, I mean, they are really are huge. <laughs> and normally the air wouldn't follow anything so violent in its shape, if you like. Um, but we remove uh, the dirty air, the boundary layer, and, and we force the air to uh, follow that diffuser shape. But actually, it's even more than that. There's six different functions. And uh, when we don't need downforce, we can dump downforce and drag too. For me, the most funky uh, one is what we call streamline. So when the driver selects that, uh, the foils drop, reducing the uh, flow behind the car. The fan fires up to maximum speed. We create a virtual long tail car with the air and we stall the diffusers and dump downforce. So that reduces drag by about 12.5%, so settles the car down, basically. I wish I had that in my racing car. That would have, been, that would have come in quite handy. We actually have one aero mode um, where we fire the fan up, open the diffuser ducts, and flip up the spoilers, and we double the downforce on the car uh, under braking. So that's, that's a safety feature as well, but can you imagine getting suddenly, getting double the downforce on the car under braking. That could definitely come in handy. Yeah. That's it's quite, quite incredible. So, shall we have a look at the interior? I'm, Indeed. I am fascinated by this. Wow. Now that is an interior. The first thing that strikes me, Gordon, the central driving position. And I know from years of driving single-seaters, that's where you need to be. Yeah, I mean, that, that was absolutely um, a starting point for me when I thought about the car. You know, it, it had to be driver in the middle, no pedal offsets, fantastic visibility, really low scuttle height, and a complete focus on the driver and the owner of the car. But yet there's no, when, when you sit in the middle, the, the, you're not sort of, the car doesn't feel different left and right hand corners. It's, it's more yeah, I mean, it's perfect. I mean, you've driven a lot of them, of course. And that, that's the, the one thing that struck me, too, is that uh, the car is so easy to place, you know, hitting the apex or just normal driving on the road. And right. particularly with a car with a small footprint combined with the, uh, the low scuttle and the central driving position. I think the passengers are like that, too. With that low scuttle, they're sitting here, and they can see right through, see the corner, see exactly what the driver's doing, exactly where the road's going. As yeah, well. we paid a lot of attention, just not, not only to the ergonomics, but actually to um, the whole experience. And that's, that's what this interior is. I mean, down to the nth detail, you know, a total focus on the driver and the driving experience. I'm looking at the pedals, first of all. The first thing I looked at, I went through there, I see that the switches are beautiful. The pedals are just a work of art. Every single thing on this car, whether the owner will ever see it or not, is an engineering work of art. Everything. The gear shift, for instance. I looked down yeah. there, I saw the, the workings of the gear shift. Beautiful. Yeah, well, if, if you've got engineering art, you might as well appreciate it and have it on display. So, six speed manual H pattern gearbox. Yes, that's, uh, that, that again is, you know, it's 100 cars. So it's, uh, it's back to the driving experience, having a fantastic engine and then having a paddle shift DCT automatic transmission just doesn't gel with me. So it had to be the whole package or nothing really. You've got the, the, a mixture between the, the, the old and the new on the dashboard. You've got these beautiful screens and then this traditional, lovely, old analog rev counter. Yeah, I, 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 I just couldn't help myself, you know. We, I wanted it to look like a watch face, you know, so there's no plastic in this car at all. Everything is aluminium, machined from solid, including the rev counter, even the needles machined from solid. And it, it's floodlit, it's not backlit like every other car on the planet, you know, so it's, um, it's that sort of thing. It's the, the obvious thing is to say, this, the great driving experience comes from NA engine, manual gearbox, central driving position, yes it does. But it's actually much more than that. It's all the subtleties and the feeling you get when you're sitting with all the controls clustered around you. The things you touch. And the stuff, exactly. The, the things you touch and feel and the quality of the switches, no spindle movement, all that sort of stuff. And we've gone to the nth degree with this car to make sure this is the best in the world. You'll notice that the induction, the ram induction for the engine is absolutely opposite the driver's ears. And what happens is you get inlet noise coming back up the track and resonating through the roof and that gives you that gorgeous growl on throttle opening so this is going to be another planet with the v12 shall we uh, shall we go and see the v12 
Gordon, this is a work of art. It's absolutely stunning. Yeah, well, this was right from day one. This was going to have to be a V12, and it was going to have to be normally aspirated. But it's a V12, but it, it's tiny. It's beautifully sculpted. There's no fat on it at all. Yeah, I mean, Cosworth have done an amazing job when we sat down to spec the engine. It wasn't just about the performance. Uh, and of course, it breaks all sorts of records with performance. But it was also about the packaging, uh, the size, and even the look of the engine. You know, the, the detail again uh, had to be something really beautiful. And this is a key point. I mean, any engine is a key point of the driving experience. I mean, and I presume most of your sort of focus on this has really been to, to, to give you that pure driving experience. Yeah, the, the, the sort of targets I had for Cosworth were um, obviously power and uh, revs. This is the world's highest revving road car engine ever at 12,100. That's it's, mighty. Yeah, it's the most power dense at 166 horsepower per litre. And most importantly, it's got the quickest engine response. That is how many revs per second. So this does 28,400 revs per second. So when you stamp your foot on the throttle, it's going to want to snap your neck off. <laughs> Fantastic. And it's, it's all mated to this beautiful Extract gearbox. Yeah, they've done a great job too. Both, I have to say, both Extract and Cosworth have been brilliant to work with, you know, sitting down and, and talking about the conceptual design rather than the actual design and what we wanted from a weight and a compactness point of view. And once again, that is the lightest supercar ge gearbox ever done. Because let's be honest, your reputation precedes you and you push people to do things that haven't been done before. So for you to say that about them, that's a, a big pat on the back for them. Yeah, this, I mean, the, this engine breaks new ground in so many different ways. And it's, for me, this is the greatest V12 ever made. And it's probably likely to be the last great V12. <laughs> But it's going to be a shame to bury it away in, in, in the car. Ah, uh, well, you see, what we've done, we've got the whole back end of the car opens in two gullwing doors. So all this engineering is on display. The engine cover? Yep. <laughs> oh, fabulous. That is cool. So if you put this tremendous thing into that wonderful car, you're going to get the ultimate driving experience, aren't you, Gordon? Well, that's what we're aiming for driving perfection. And I do not doubt you're going to achieve it. Like all of you, I cannot wait to drive this car. Gordon, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you everybody for joining us. Goodbye. <laughs>